morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Paloma Handlin. I'm from um, Northbrook Met. I'm the MEP lead and the action research lead. Our action research project this year was investigating flipped learning, specifically how do teachers respond? So we were looking at what changes are we willing to make to help our learners become more confident and independent. Um, the reason we chose to look into flipped learning, I suppose I should um, define it. I'm sure everyone here has been exposed to the concept of flipped learning in one way or another. For the purpose of our project, we were looking at students doing a bit of pre-learning before the session. So looking at some of the basic key information around a topic and maybe doing some simple practice before they come into class. And the reason we were interested in this was um, the time constraints that uh, are associated with GCSE resets and FE, we're all familiar with that. There was a feeling that we spend a lot of our time filling gaps with no real time in the classroom for deeper learning and problem solving. Um, we were hoping it would be a tool to boost student confidence and engagement in class as well. Um, obviously they come with a lot of baggage to resets um, and we were hoping that this would help with that as well. And there was a feeling in our teaching teams that we wanted to help our students to develop lifelong learning habits. So some strong independent self-study learning habits. So that was why we were interested in flipped learning. Um, in our literature review, we found there's, there is a lot of research on how flipped learning benefits learners. It's used um, a lot in higher education and it's used well at A-level. Um, there is a little bit more recent action research in the FE sector that has shown that it builds learner confidence. So we already knew that from the research. Um, that research already showed that they found that more able learners tended to engage more, um, that teacher attitudes influenced learner engagement. So the teachers who were most um, excited and enthusiastic about it tended to get more engagement from their learners. Um, and the last one is really crucial, is that if the idea of flipped learning is that the students are accessing the basic input themselves and sort of teaching themselves the basic con concepts ahead of time, if the teacher then just teaches the basic input anyway at the beginning of class, engagement in flipped learning drops. So we were aware of all of this before we embarked on our trial of flipped learning. So our research aim was really to explore how teachers adjust their pedagogical approach within the classroom um, to enhance deeper level learning based on the results of their students' flipped learning self-study sessions. So they've done some flipped learning. This is how they've got on with it. How do we change our teaching based on that? Uh, in cycle one, uh, we did some surveys to measure attitudes, both learner attitudes and teacher attitudes. And we gave presentations to teachers and to learners to introduce the concept of flipped learning, talk about how we were going to do it in our setting. I just want to draw your attention to the, the student survey there. It says homework versus flipped learning student experience. Um, that was because we were aware that not all learners would have had an experience of flipped learning before. Um, so we were kind of getting their attitudes towards homework and then also using the survey to introduce the idea of flipped learning, like what, how would you feel if we did this thing? <laughs> so um, that's why it has the word homework on there. Um, we also, after we'd done the surveys, we uh, did an online CPD session. So Sam Perry from Reese Heath College um, did an online session for teachers so that, um, because they've, used flipped learning at Reese Heath and um, he was just made himself available for teachers to be able to ask questions and he was sharing good practice. Um, in cycle one then we um, determined so what we used Century as the flipped learning delivery platform. Um, some people might be familiar with Century, some people might not, but what you can do on Century is, does, is assign nuggets, little nuggets of learning. The nuggets have videos and information sheets attached and then little quizzes that students can do. So we um, spent some time identifying 
prerequisite skills and some basic practice skills that would go with the topics on our scheme of work. And we created assignments and signed them, assigned them on Century. And then we measured teacher experiences at the end of cycle one. So we kind of got teacher attitudes at the beginning of cycle one and teacher experiences at the end of cycle one, as well as capturing student attitudes within cycle one. So our findings from cycle one, um, generally teachers were very positive about the idea of flipped learning. Uh, we had 10 respondents in cycle one. Um, these are the sort of potential benefits that they um, anticipated. So encouraging independent learning, that was really important. All the teachers um, picked that out as a benefit that they wanted to see. Um, teachers thought it would be useful for, for students with additional learning needs to see what's coming up. 80% um, of teachers thought it could give students more confidence walking into the class, and 80% were interested in freeing up class time to tackle more challenging problems. The biggest concern was some will do it and some won't, and how do I manage that? I just wanted to take a moment now for you to think, given that I've just shared the attitudes of our teachers, well, wanted to get you to reflect on what your attitudes are towards flipped learning. So in the chat, could you just really quickly tell me whether you think your students would do flipped learning and why or why not? <laughs> so some people are already doing it. That's amazing. Um, Beatrice. Lovely. OK, so Shivana, you're saying, is it too much work for them? Difficult to get students to work at home? Yes, I feel you. <laughs> They'll forget, forget. <laughs> um, hmm. Hit and miss. Yeah. Effort. Yeah, effort is like a dirty word <laughs> for some learners, isn't it? Okay, wow, things are coming in so quickly. I'm, I'm not, I'm like having trouble reading them as they're all coming in. Yeah, it, it, success depends on the platform. Entry level classes can be hit and miss. Okay, um, we could, I could read these all day, but we obviously don't have time to read them all day. I'm going to move, move on, but I think that that's sort of just, I just wanted to give you a chance to put yourself in the position that our teachers were in thinking about what sorts of things might be happening with learners. Um, our teacher expectations, I wanted to just show you the contrast between teacher expectations and student views coming out of cycle one. So the biggest perceived barrier to student engagement, according to our teachers, before they started in earnest was students attitude to homework. Um, so all 10 of our teachers rated this either severe or prohibitive. Um, the biggest reason that students actually gave for non-completion of homework, and this was from 71 respondents, was lack of time. So 51% of the respondents chose this. So students genuinely believe that they don't have a lot, that they don't have enough time to do anything outside of class. When we ask students, if you are assigned a flipped learning task to do online to prepare for a class, how likely are you to do it? 75% um, of students gave a neutral response to a positive response. So they actually didn't have really negative attitudes towards being asked to do something outside of class. They just felt like they didn't have enough time. Um, so when I share this with the teachers after cycle one, um, I, I took it as sort of an indication that culture change might not be as hard as we think. Um, and I've got a little three in a star there. That's representing um, three teachers who when surveyed said they had not made any changes to their classroom teaching as a result of flipped learning. So um, we sort of asked teachers about a variety of changes that they could make. Um, or and ask them about anything that they did make, any changes they did make, and three teachers said they'd made no changes. So if you go back and think about engagement and, and the research that says you actually do have to change in, in response to flipped learning in order for students to engage, we, we felt like we needed to do something a little bit different to make sure that we were not just still teaching the basic input again. So what we did for cycle two, um, we created a new lesson structure. So um, we had suggested low stakes quizzes for teachers to get students to engage. Um, 
we've then sort of put that into a structure and said it was an expectation. Uh, we introduced some new problem solving tasks because I think teachers were a little bit unclear. They're like, well, we're freeing up time for deep thinking and problem solving, but we're not entirely sure what that looks like. So we provided some training on that and we did um, goal free and naked questions where we're stripping away some of the structures so that students are really having to think deeply in order to access the questions. Um, providing information sheets instead of uh, just going through the PowerPoint slides in front of the class is to provide the same information but on sheets on the table so students can dip in as and when they need. Um, um, and a learner self-reflection log so that learners are kind of reflecting on flipped learning and how it may have helped them or not helped them in class. And then we did another student survey, another teacher survey, teacher interviews. Um, we also had a low stakes quiz tracker and the century usage tracker. So we were sort of tracking various different pieces of data. Um, this is just to show you really quickly, this was the structure that we proposed for all teachers to use. Uh, you'll see sort of the first 40 minutes we were saying we want these elements to be there and uh, resources were provided for um, these elements. Um, and we engaged some teachers in, you know, the action research group was engaged in making these and we engaged some teachers in making them as well. Um, then, then the rest of the lesson was up to the teachers. So they had some flexibility to use activities or resources that they like and have used in the past and know to be useful. So there was some flexibility in our new structure. Um, so I'd like to, again, in the chat, invite you to think it's March when we're <laughs> when we're delivering this second cycle. Um, what external factors do you think might have had an impact on how the cycle went? If anyone wants to just pop stuff into the chat. Mm, so close to final exams, exam prep. <laughs> exam worries, yeah. Advanced information, yes, revision, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show you the four biggies that I, so um, we were right in our mock exams, okay? So there was a lot of mock exam prep, mock ex actual de delivering the mock exams and then reviewing from the mock exams. So that sort of interferes with this structure a little bit as well. Uh, COVID, again, it's still such a disruption. Um, learners were out, staff members were out. You know, it really um, continues to disrupt education on all levels. Um, exam prep, yeah. And um, the other action research is specifically looking at curriculum design and preparing learners for exams. So we had to sort of give some sessions over for the other action research group to be able to deliver some of their intervention and then exams. Yeah, just looming. Um, nonetheless, our findings from cycle two were um, fairly positive. I mean, engagement with the actual flipped learning again was hit and miss. Um, but when we uh, surveyed students at the end of cycle two, their top reasons for not completing flipped learning assignments were that they couldn't find the time. Again, um, some of them didn't like Century, interestingly, um, and some of them were confused about which assignments to do before class. So they have their own um, learning pathway on Century, which is pr presenting them with things to do. And then we tried to really carefully signpost what the flipped learning was by labeling it in particular ways, but learners were st still getting a little bit confused with that. Um, but the top ways that flipped learning had helped them, 41% um, said they'd learned something new from doing the flipped learning. And if students are learning something new outside of class, I, I count that as a win, <laughs> you know? 38% um, said they were able to refresh their memory before you cover a topic in class. So that, you know, that time has been saved because they're not refreshing their memory in class, they're doing it ahead of time. 50, oh, sorry, 25% oh, uh, said that they felt more prepared when walking into class, and 19% said they were able to work more independently in class, which is freeing up some teacher time as well to help those who still can't quite work independently. 
Um, in terms of teacher response, in cycle one, the most used adjustment was to start the class with a low stakes quiz. So 30% of teachers were doing that. In cycle two, the most used adjustments were again, low stakes quizzes, um, but then also providing more fact sheets and other, other reference materials, concentrating more on problem solving and reducing the amount of introductory teaching. So these were all the sorts of effects that we were hoping flipped learning would have on our classroom teaching. Generally, teachers made far more adjustments in cycle two than they did in cycle one. And only one teacher was now reporting that they weren't making any adjustments to their classroom teaching. Um, the part of the new structure that teachers valued most was the thinking questions. So those goal for your naked questions on which we had the CPD. Uh, the part they described as least useful was the student reflective journal. <laughs> um, so we don't, um, as a department, regularly use exit tickets. Um, so I think introducing something like that halfway through the year was was always going to be a little bit ambitious. It was, you know, students were running out the door and we were trying to force them to do a, a reflective journal. So that was a bit tricky. Um, just some examples of changes in pedagogy. Uh, in, in the survey after cycle two, uh, teacher A revealed several changes to her approach. So concentrating more on exam style questions, using more diagnostic questions, concentrating more on problem solving and providing more fact sheets and over other reference materials. So that's, that's quite a few changes in just two cycles of action research for someone to introduce into their classroom teaching. Um, and then um, in, in an interview, uh, teacher B described how the flipped learning structure allowed her to split her class into those who'd done the flipped learning, therefore understood the basic prerequisite information and those who hadn't. I'm not gonna read this to you. I'm just gonna give you a moment to read this. Um, we're nearly done. We're going on to next steps, but I'm just gonna give people a moment to read this. Okay, so just from this, we were finding, you know, teachers almost felt like they had a little bit more permission or a little bit more leeway to teach more flexibly and to um, push students to do things a little bit more independently in class and sort of divvy up their class between the people who really needed some input and the people who could maybe get on with some things on their own. Um, and hopefully that this will be a lasting change in people's teaching approach. Uh, next steps. Okay, I, I know that we're running <laughs> over the 15 minutes. So um, we're going to have a more robust flipped learning induction. So workshops and, and getting students to build up that independence in stages, um, probably change the way that the flipped learning is assigned so that it's much, much clearer what you have to do and by when. Um, providing a mix of flipped learning and homework. So maybe half of the self-directed study time would be on flipped learning and the other half would be on stuff that they did cover in class. So practice, because some students were saying that they missed practicing. Um, yes, yeah, students said they missed homework. It was bizarre. Um, <laughs> self, our self-directed study, we need, to, we need those sessions to be registered. We need to have some built-in time and some staff sessions to refer students to when they're not getting on with it. Um, and we want to blend it with um, mindset and habit building. So, um, uh, and some sort of identity. We're thinking about getting students to identify instead of thinking, I don't have time to do GCSE study as identify like I'm a GCSE, G GCSE research student who studies mass in between lessons because that's what successful GCSE research students do. Um, that's me done. <laughs> um, and obviously, I will be quite happy to answer any questions in the Q&A. Thank you so much for your attention.